Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Andrew's Church and to our Remembrance Sunday service. Uh, Welcome if you are joining us online, it's great to have you with us and I just want to explain what we hope is going to happen this morning because it's a little bit different. Uh, First time we've live streamed from the Cenotaph uh, so we're trusting that that is going to work well. Uh, So our plan is that our opening bit of the service will begin here in a moment. Uh, We'll live stream that, so you should be able to see that. And then at 10.40, we will switch to the Cenotaph. Uh, You will see a holding slide, and there may be no sound for a little while. You may just need to bear with us for a moment as we switch over. Uh, And then at the end of the Act of Remembrance, we will all come back into church for the family service, while that's happening, uh, there will be some music uh, from Royal Grammar School for Boys Brass Band who are with us uh, and some highlights from last year's Remembrance Service uh, and all being well, that will take us up to the start of the family service. If we have problems with the live stream outside, then my right-hand man, David Jack, is going to uh, take over just to lead things through in here and that will be streamed. Uh, It may be that for the things coming from outside, you won't see lyrics on the live stream because we've realised we've got a bit of an issue with that. We haven't got uh, a way to deal with that at the moment. So apologies if that's the case. And just join in as best you can or enjoy listening. Uh, But before and after, everything should work as usual. Some words from Micah chapter 4. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The Lord will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation nor will they train for war anymore. We've come together to worship Almighty God, to offer him praise and thanksgiving for our nation's deliverance in time of war, to recall to our minds those who through death, injury or bereavement suffered to bring peace and freedom to our world, to seek his forgiveness for our failure, to achieve reconciliation between the nations and to ask for strength to overcome evil and injustice wherever it is found. Let us pray. Eternal God, in whose perfect realm no sword is drawn but the sword of justice, and no strength known but the strength of love, guide and inspire all who seek your kingdom, that peoples and nations may find their security in the love which casts out fear, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. So please stand for our opening hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd. Thank you. 
Please sit down. Inevitably, this morning, part of the service may be a bit ad hoc, depending on whether the live stream works and when it works and so on. I hope you'll forgive that. I want to read from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. So soon days turn to dusk and night is coming red child fading our hopes are gone teach us to gain our hearts of wisdom teach us to live with the end in sight none can stand or shall perish until you give us i 
I'm now going to invite Margaret Allen from Lower Babington Methodist Church to share with me in leading our act of remembrance. We commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations that all people may together live in freedom, justice, and peace. We pray for all who, in bereavement, disability, and pain, continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflict, past and present, have been given and taken away. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. May the memory of war strengthen our heart at peace. May the memory of those who died inspire our service to the living. May the memory of past destruction move us to build for the future. O God of peace, O Father of souls, O builder of the kingdom of love, amen. I'd now invite uh, those who've come prepared to lay a wreath to do so as I invite you forward. Uh, firstly, Clatterbridge councillors. Brenda Ashton on behalf of the Labour Party. Constable Diane Park on behalf of Bebbington Police Station. Linda Smallthwaite on behalf of Bevington Girl Guiding Groups. Richie Clark on behalf of Church Lads and Church Girls Brigade. Lower Babington Methodist Church. St. Andrew's Church. If there's anyone else who wishes to lay a wreath, please come forward now. Our Bevington Scouts.
Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth or the earth and the world were framed, from everlasting to everlasting you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. The days of our life are threescore and ten, or if our strength endures, even fourscore. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow. For they soon pass away and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath and your indignation, indignation like those who fear you? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Turn again, O Lord, how long will you delay? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Let us pray. Almighty God, the God of justice, not oppression, the God of peace and not of violence, deepen our gratitude for those who gave themselves that we might live without fear. Preserve peace where it is threatened, and extend it wherever scars of conflict remain unhealed, that your kingdom of righteousness and peace may triumph over all divisions which mar your world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let your mercy and blessing, O Lord of Lords, rest upon our land and nation, upon our Queen and those in authority under her, the ministers of state and the great councils of the nation, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Rule the hearts of our people in your faith and fear. Rebuke the powers of unbelief and superstition and preserve to us your word that we may hear and obey it, even to the end of days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Some verses from the Bible for us to reflect on. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 121, verse 1. I lift up my eyes to the hill. From whence will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Lamentations 3, from verse 21. This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Isaiah 40, verse 31. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? And the Beatitudes from Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
Let us remember with gratitude those who in the cause of peace and the service of their fellow men died for their country in time of war. Let us commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? We will. Will Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? We We will. Will you work for a just future for all humanity? 
Merciful God, we offer to you the fears in us that have not yet been cast out by love. May we accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of all people and live lives of justice, courage, mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're very welcome to join us in the church for a family service. Um, and if you're watching online, that service will start in about 10 minutes, but there will be things continuing on the live stream in the meantime. So please stay with us. Uh, if I can ask just to make the flow of people a little bit more manageable, um, if uniform groups going into the service would like to come through this way, uh, past the memorial, up the path, and round the other side of the church into the entrance at the far side. Um, if the rest of you who are going into church would like to make your way up the footpath along Church Road, up the steps on the left, and into the entrance this side. If any of you struggle with steps, then the only route is further along the path around Church Road to the Lich Gate. Thank you very much for being with us. God bless you. Every Remembrance Day, we wear a poppy. But what you might know is some of the symbolism that comes with the poppy. Now, Arthur's going to help me with the colours, aren't you? So, colour are the petals? Oh, let's go. What colour? Red. Red. Good boy. What colour is the leaf? Green. Green. And what colour is the centre? No, button. It, it is a button, yeah. What colour is it? Black, good boy. The red of the petals can be thought of to symbolize the blood that was shed by all those who fought in the two world wars and various wars since then. The black can be thought of to symbolize the mourning that happened from the people who were still at home who lost their loved ones. But the green symbolizes the hope that the grass and the crops will regrow after the wars. And the same thing can be said of thinking about Jesus. The red can be thought of to symbolize the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. The black can be thought of to symbolize those three days of mourning when Jesus was in the tomb before his resurrection. And the green is the hope that we have that we will one day live in a new creation that heaven and earth will become one once more. And so the poppy is about remembrance, but can also be about the gospel message. So quite a powerful little flower. Thank you. 
If you joined us from outside or if you're with us online, it's great to have you with us. Very warm welcome. Uh, just one or th two things to mention before we continue with our service. Uh, wanted to let you know about some things that are coming up. We are running our usual big Christmas event, Christmas Journey and Tree Festival, which is going to be on the 11th of December. Uh, it'll be done a little bit differently from usual, slightly smaller scale to do it COVID safely, um, but it is happening between four and seven that day. Uh, please put that in your diary. There'll be more information about that and about our other Christmas services uh, coming up soon on our website and in the newsletter. Uh, secondly, if you are planning to contribute to the Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Appeal, a reminder that shoeboxes uh, need to be taken in this week and they need to be taken to the entertainer uh, in either Birkenhead or Cheshire Oaks. Please don't bring them to church. Uh, so that needs to happen during this week if you want those to go off. Um, and finally, just to let you know that our toy service will be on the 5th of December. Uh, we welcome gifts of new toys which you can bring with you on that day if you're coming. Um, or you can uh, give uh, money in advance for us to buy toys to go to uh, local families in need. So let's uh, join together in prayer. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives. For the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as we sing 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord and my soul.
please do be seated. When we focus on God and his greatness, we soon realize our own failings. But the wonderful is, the thing is that God promises us forgiveness through his son, Jesus Christ, when we turn to him. So as I lead us in our confession, please join in the repeat of the responses. Lord, have mercy and Christ have mercy. In a dark and disfigured world, we have not held out the light of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In a hungry and despairing world, we have failed to share our bread. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. In a cold and loveless world, we have kept the love of God to ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Please remain seated as members of our guides bring us our Bible readings. Psalm 16, keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord, apart from you I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the God who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mark chapter 13, verses 1 to 8. As Jesus... <clears throat> Sorry. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all of these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming, I am he, and many will deceive many. When you hear, war, when you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you both very much. Why do we have Remembrance Sunday? We remember people who have died for their country in war the two world wars, and many others since. We have Remembrance Sunday because something bad has happened, lots of bad things, in fact, because people and countries have fought each other and people have died. Jesus warned his disciples that this would happen. And in the reading that we've just heard from Mark's Gospel, they were saying how amazing the temple building was. And it was. The stones were enormous. Some of the stones were as long as this platform is wide, or even longer, and about as high as I am. It was an amazing building and a great feat of engineering, 
But Jesus tells them, this is all going to be torn down. And it was by the Romans about 40 years later. Now, to the Jewish people, the idea of the temple being destroyed was really disastrous. It was almost like the end of the world because the temple was God's dwelling place. It was their centre of, not just their place of worship, the centre of their faith and their identity as a people. So Jesus' followers ask him, when's this going to happen? What will be the signs? Jesus knows that they're not just talking about the temple itself. So what he's telling us is about the end of time, when he'll return. And he doesn't tell us when that will be, but what he does say is that until he comes back, there will be wars and famines and earthquakes and disasters. And he says, such things must happen, but don't be alarmed. The end is still to come. In other words, when bad things happen, like wars, that's not the end of everything. So he says, don't be alarmed, but how can we not be? It is more than alarming, it's frightening when we see terrible things happening around the world. So how can we not be alarmed? Well, to answer that question, we're going to look, just quickly, at our other reading, Psalm 16. David, who wrote this psalm, knew all about danger. He knew about wars, he knew about enemies, he knew about people trying to kill him. But he also knew that he could trust God. He sees God as his refuge. And a refuge is a place of safety. If we trust God, that doesn't mean that nothing bad is ever going to happen to us. But if we let him guide us, and if we live as he wants us to, we'll avoid a lot of dangerous situations and a lot of hurt. David says, God is his portion and his cup, and God makes his lot secure. What does he mean by all that? Portion could be used to talk about food or land, about things that belong to you or were given to you. And cup could be used in a similar way. But these words might also be used to describe people's security. What David is saying is that his real security is in God and that God provides for him and nourishes him. Jesus himself said, human beings shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Our real security needs to be in him. David also says he has an inheritance which God has given him. He's trusting God for what he's going to give him in the future. And in the last verses of this psalm, we see one of the clearest instances anywhere in the Old Testament in, of trust in God for life after death. That's made much clearer in the New Testament through Jesus. If we put our trust in Jesus, we're promised that he will bring us through death to be with him forever. That's what is called Christian hope, the promise of eternal life with him. And that's why we don't need to be alarmed or afraid when bad things happen. Because if we've trusted in Jesus, then our future is safe. The trouble is, though, that it's very hard to do that when bad things are happening around us or to us, isn't it? So let me tell you what we need to do. Recently, I breathed a sigh of relief when I cut the rectory lawn for the last time this year. It's a big job. It takes ages. Now, when I mow a lawn, I like to try and get the lines nice and straight. It looks better, doesn't it? And you might have a straight edge on your lawn to work from, but if you don't, how do you get a straight line to start with? You find something at the other end of the lawn, maybe a bar on the fence or a tree or something like that, and you focus on it as you walk straight towards it. And that keeps you walking in a straight line. Now I know that because I grew up on a farm. And when you're working on a farm, when you're harvesting your crops or when you're ploughing a ground or whatever it might be, you want to get nice straight lines. You want to drive your combine harvester in a straight line because otherwise you miss bits and you're not using the full capacity of the machine. You, and it's not just about it looking neat. If you want to do the job well, you need nice straight lines. When you're ploughing your field, you want it nice and straight so that you don't get big dips and lumps in the ground afterwards. 
And the trouble is that trying to drive a straight line, the ground's never completely even. There's always bumps, and they can throw you off course. So what you have to do, there's probably some great electronic kit these days that does it, but there wasn't when I was young. So you'd fix your eye on something at the other end of the field, a tree or something like that, and you would drive straight towards it. And as you drive straight towards that tree on the horizon, when you go over the bumps in the ground, you can correct your direction and you can keep going in a straight line. Now that's what we need to do in life. And what we need to focus on is Jesus. That won't always stop bad things happening. But when they do, like the bumps in the ground, we can steer over them and keep on going. He's promised us that we can live forever with him. And if we put our trust in him, no one can take that away. He's promised that he will always be with us. And even in the hardest times, we can know that he's there. So we need to be focused on him. That means trusting him. It means spending time with him through reading and studying the Bible so we get to know him better and we hear what he wants to say to us. It means praying to him, listening to him, doing our best to follow him. And then he'll lead us through and he'll be with us and help us all the way. So whatever bumps we find in the road of life, let's keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you promised your followers to be with us always. We thank you that you make us wonderful promises for the future and that we can know that in you we are safe. Help us to keep focused on you and to trust you always. Amen. So now we come to a time of prayer and uh, members of Church Lads and Church Girls Brigade are going to lead us in our prayers this morning. Look at your poppy. Poppies are bright and cheerful flowers. Give thanks to God for the lives of those who have died in war, remembering all the joy they brought to families and friends and all the good things they did for their home and their country. Then look at the red petals. Red reminds of, of, of danger and harm. Ask God to be close to those who are still facing danger each day. Mm. To give courage to the armed forces and compassion to all who help others. Place your whole hand over the poppy. Poppies are also fragile and need to be handled gently. God cares for those who are hurting and those who are sad. Ask God to comfort all who are grieving the loss of someone they love. Finally, place a finger of the on the centre of the poppy, ask God to help you play your part for working in peace in the world. Dear God, we are saddened at the thought of war, of the soldiers who must fight, and all those people who are killed. Today, we remember their sacrifice. We thank them for what they did for us. We also remember that they won for us a victory, that without their bravery, these wars may have been lost and our lives could have been so very different. Without the freedom we so much enjoy, we thank them for what they did for us. We are saddened at the thoughts of your suffering, that you too had to be a great hero and walk to Jerusalem, be arrested and tried and killed on the cross. We thank you for what you did for us. We also remember that you won for us a victory. And on that Easter morning, you rose again and helped us to overcome our human nature so that we might rise again with you. We thank you for what you did for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for the countries where children and families live in fear from war and conflict. 
Please help to bring some peace to them. Protect all, sorry. Protect all those who try and help to make friends again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift all those who are facing various illnesses. Give them the, the hope and courage they need to today and every day comfort their pain calm their fears and surround them with your peace lord in your mercy hear our prayer let us join all our prayers together in the words that our savior taught us our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come you will be done on earth as in heaven forgive give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the king, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much, brigade members. We are coming towards the end of our service. We have a final hymn. Uh, a great hymn about the hope that we have through Jesus Christ, in Christ alone. Please stand to sing.
be seated as we join together in our closing prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is despair, hope. And where there is sadness, joy. Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. Uh, after I've closed with a blessing in a moment and we hear the supreme sacrifice played, uh, there will be refreshments available at the back, uh, but I'm going to invite the uniform groups to leave first, just to save too much crowding at the back. Um, if you want to make your way out, unless there are any who are actually staying with parents and so on, um, and if the rest of you could just remain seated while they do that, and then uh, just take your time so that we don't create too much of a crush at the back. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you again to Wirral Grammar School for Boys Brass Band for being with us to play this morning and to everyone who's taken part. A closing prayer of blessing. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.